the spread of Islam from China to Andalus, each area are from its culture. So we we'll find the Arabic calligraphy in ceramics, coins, uh, we find in mosques, we find in textiles. Hello, and welcome to Qatar 365 with me, Adil Halim. On this episode, we're immersing ourselves into the world of books and literature. We'll explore how reading can fuel creativity and how the written word can be an art form that lasts centuries. But first, Laila Humara went across Doha to find out how organizations are thinking outside the box to get children interested in books. Meet Ramli. He's a familiar face at the children's section of the Qatar National Library, and today is his special day. Ramli has been officially inaugurated as the QNL's mascot, and the kids are thrilled. Inspired by the Arabian Desert Fox, the library hopes to instill the same sense of inquisitiveness and adventurous nature as the animal to children all around Qatar. Ramli, for us, is the most important part of the library. Of course, Ramli loves the library, loves the game, and he's a very good one. He's always going to be able to show the knowledge of the children. Ramli the mascot is among many initiatives put together to encourage children to read more and spend more time in libraries. One way to do that is through storytelling sessions, which Ibrahim frequently leads. أقدر أسميها شوية متلفزة مسرحية وأحاول أضيف فيها أسلوب الخاص من خلال تغيير صوتي يعني مثلاً أحاول أن أتكلم بشخصية الشريرة وبعد ذلك يأتي ذلك المسكين ويحرم أحاول أن أغير صوتي بين حين وآخر هذا شيء ينفت انتباه الأطفال ويشدهم إلى إلى القصص ويبدأون في قراءة القصص حتى يتذكروا هذه اللحظات ويبدأون في تقليدي From the local library to an international book fair where every year, the sprawling 29,000-square-meter Doha Exhibition and Convention Center is packed with activities celebrating books and reading. The 33rd edition of the Doha International Book Fair has attracted more than 500 publishers from over 40 countries, where the focus goes beyond just books. Through musical performances, calligraphy, live storytelling and interactive booths for people of all ages, Organizers are hoping to inspire visitors to make knowledge and creativity a central chapter of their lives. A traditional dance troupe from Oman takes to the stage for a special performance. As this year's guest of honor country, they get to put on a show for visitors and give them a taste of Omani hospitality. The Japanese embassy has also drawn quite a crowd. They've come for a lesson on origami and a demonstration of Japanese calligraphy, but some have stayed to flip through a few books about the culture. We have also a number of different kinds of books, ranging from Japanese language textbooks for those who want to learn Japanese, and also uh, some books about uh, uh, tourism in Japan. Kazuto says the crowd gets bigger every year, not just at Japan's booth, an indication that interest in literature, no matter where they're from, transcends borders and cultures. As literature and education go hand in hand, Liwan Design Studios has a permanent exhibition celebrating the life of Qatar's pioneering educator, Amna Mahmoud al Jaida. Honor the past to celebrate the future, Qatar's educational vision pays tribute to the founder and first principal of Qatar's inaugural girls' school. I sat down with Qatar Museum's Sheikh Reem Al-Fani to find out how archival material dating back to 1938 is being used to highlight the school's impact on multiple generations of Qatari women. 
Sheikh Arim, how does this exhibition celebrate the legacy of Amna Mahmoud Al Jaida? Well, it really is a homage to her and to what she has done for the education system, but also for women education. She is someone who was fighting for women's education and talked talk to the families of the different uh, girls to see if the, how can she bring them first into the Qatab system and actually have it in her house as a safe space. And that fight literally meant going door to door to convince families to send their, their daughters to school. How was that received at the time? At the time, uh, you could see even from our newspapers, and we have some of those on display here in what used to be her office. Definitely there was some backlash, definitely it was a hard like uphill battle for her to go through, but it was very um, fruitful and you see also um, pictures that we have here documented from the time actually on the same exact uh, courtyard that you see outside of the girls sitting down around her and it's one of the only images that we have actually of her and she's teaching them Quran and behind us actually is her Quran her personal Quran that she would be teaching people and it's handwritten and it's uh, in an impeccable shape we're sitting in what used to be the principal's office and there's archive material that dates back to 1938 what are some of the things that visitors can expect when they come here? So when you come to this exhibition, the intention was to actually first document. Their histories in Qatar are not always very uh, written down. We're collecting people more than documenting people. And this was a great example of this, us having to go back in the timeline to verify information, uh, objects, where did they come from, all the stories behind them. They even have um, on one of these walls, there's a map of Qatar at that time there wasn't a geography uh, book, so the teachers here did that themselves. They actually created the map of Qatar with all its geography, um, and we're teaching it to the students. So these are some of the things you can see here. Why was it important to make this a permanent exhibition at Liwan? This exhibition is actually a partnership with a class that I teach at VCU, where um, since I am someone who's been in exhibition design for a very long time, and I've been working with the museums, uh, it's something that I have seen with students and people coming in just out of university, especially for design, where they're seeing their conceptual work, but how do you actually create it within the physical world? So I started this class with VCU with this intention. And for you personally, what does Amna's legacy mean? Well, I do believe like if she hadn't had that fight to actually um, have girls, have a spa safe space for girls to go into education, we wouldn't be here. The art of Arabic calligraphy is at the heart of Qatar's thriving literary scene. The ancient writing style is a prized tradition and a key part of the cultural heritage of the region. Joanna Hughes visited the Museum of Islamic Art to put her pen to paper and learn more about the centuries-old practice. The combination of the Greek words kolos and grapho, calligraphy literally means beautiful writing. The art form traces back thousands of years, but is still taught in classrooms like this one, where budding artists are escaping the summer sun to get crafty with letters and words. In calligraphy, you need three basic materials, paper, pen, and ink. But as I'm finding out at this creative calligraphy workshop, hosted by the Museum of Islamic Art, the simplicity of the toolkit is deceiving, because painting with words is anything but simple. No, push it straight. No, 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 push it. Push, don't come like this, push, okay. like this, mm. but don't change that. Okay? Arabic calligraphy, it depends on rules. First, how to hold the pen in the correct angle. So you need a teacher to learn how to hold the correct angle, and then you can practice in the correct way. The museum hosts workshops for calligraphy enthusiasts of all ages. From seasoned artists to first-timers, they are all inspired by the Arabic calligraphy on display in the museum. Workshop host Hussein has more patience than most. He has been perfecting the art of writing for decades to master not one, but many of the different styles that have evolved over the centuries. We have five classic scripts. We have Kufik, we have Ruga, we have Nasr, we have Nastaliq, we have Diwani. Each script needs a time. 
it needs a long time to, to be perfect in it. The spread of Islam from China to Andalus, each area are from its culture. So we find the Arabic calligraphy in ceramics, coins, uh, we find in mosques, we find in textiles. Decorative handwriting is used as a visual expression of faith in many religions, with verses from holy scripts adorning places of worship around the world. Here at Qatar's Minaretain Mosque, verses from the Quran are a distinctive feature in a design by Iraqi architect and calligrapher Taha al hiti The artist Taha chose one of the surahs in the Holy Quran. It's called al Hujurat. And this specific surah that he chose talks about the morals and values that we as a human should have. Respect, honesty, do not talk about others behind their back, do not spy, be respectful, trustworthy, and he surrounded the whole building with it. Calligraphy graces the Mina Rete Mosque outside and in, with the traditional handwriting seamlessly blending with contemporary architectural design. He was so creative in building this uh, building, the Minaretim building, and specifically the Minaretim Mosque, because he chose to use his creativity, blending the modern perspective and the beauty of Arabic uh, calligraphy. Equally striking is the penmanship on Mosque 27 on Qatar's Kataifan Island. The traditional verses are another prime example of Qatar's efforts to mix old and new, captivating worshippers and non-worshippers alike. From international book fairs to ancient calligraphy that stood the test of time and a look back at the first ever girls' school in Qatar, we hope you enjoyed this episode, but that's all the time we have for now. For more, check out Euronews.com and connect with us through our hashtag. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Qatar 365.